In this video I will show you how to use the EVE solar plugin. Now, if you don't know what this is about, you have to see the video Pro Architect 002 where I explain what is the idea behind this plugin. It was to show you how you can get fast from a, from a simple idea to a working tool. So I will simply go and drag and drop the RHP file that you also have and type in EVE solar and I will get this dialog. If you have used Eve Sun before, then you are familiar with this Sun dialog, but we'll go through it quickly. You can uh, turn on the Sun dialog and it will show immediately somewhere. Just for the visualization purposes, you can reposition it and you can change the radius and uh, the north will point in the positive y direction, but you can also change, the, change that by inserting some angle in degrees. I will leave it at zero for now. It is important to say that the sun positions will always work. It doesn't matter where you position them or how do you scale them. It's just that for visualization purposes, it's sometimes nice to do it like this. But anyway, what you're doing, you're basically creating an array of vectors and they can be anywhere in the file. You will want to set the sun. You can set the sun for a single point in time or for a certain interval. In this case, let's do it from the June of 20 from the 21st of June of 2017 till the 21st of December of 2017 the time of the day is not so important we will have a time zone we will have our geolocation and we can say we want the sun position every five hours in this interval and if I go and I show all possible positions I will get also position sun positions during the night I can change that to only day or if I want to I can only show the solar window which is from 9 o'clock until 3 9 o'clock a.m. until 3 o'clock p.m. in this case we'll let's just use the positions all the positions during the day you can also extract the positions if you need them for something they will be here let's delete them for now and now you want to generate your panels you can always turn off on and off the sun if you if it's bothering you it will always stay there in the background so you select your surface the important thing about the surface is orientation so your panels will always be generated from this point in rows and the rows will always be in this u direction which in your case should be uh, if we're talking about a roof a horizontal direction and v should be more the vertical direction now if your uh, surface is not oriented properly how you want it you see the normal of the surface is also important this is the direction where your panels will be generated you can always type in uh, dir as the direction and you can reverse the u reverse the v swap u and v and then once you're done you can reselect your surface you skip this uniform flat roof and choose orientation for now that will be uh, applicable to this flat roof here let's click on generate panels so we start there so we see what we're working with the panels are generated now with all these settings here. I will show you what they are. The width of the panel is the dimension of the panel in the U direction, which is this here. The length of the panel is the dimension in the V direction, which is this. The thickness is of course the thickness. Now you have the offset in U direction, the distance between the two panels. Because my panel has the width of 10 and the offset is 10.5, I will have the gap of 0.5 here. If I have the offset of 12, I will have a larger gap here. Now, the offset in V direction will show you the overlap. Now, here you have three modes of visualizations of your panel. You can see them only as meshes, only as an outline, or you can see them as a mesh and as an, as an outline. Let's click on the outline just to show you the overlap now. The length of our panel is 20 units and the offset is 15 between in the V direction, which will clearly give us an overlap of 5 units. If I put the offset to 18, it will give me the overlap of only 2. And you will see that the inclination of the panel will be calculated automatically based on these dimensions. And then you have the row offset, which is the amount for which every second row will be offset in the U direction. I can put it to 0, then I will have no offset at all. And then as I progress, you can clearly see what is happening. I put five so that I'm approximately here in the middle. You will be able to export the panels. It will export all the panels in form of meshes here. So you can use them for rendering or whatever. 
and you can calculate the efficiency of the panels. Let's turn the sun positions back on so that we see what we are dealing with approximately. And uh, the sun position, let me show you that here. So if you imagine you have a single panel, you ideally want the sun ray to hit this panel with a 90 degree angle. And for this panel and this particular sun position, this relationship will have a value of 1. And between these positions and the 90 degree position, we will have the values between 0 and 1. And again, from 1 going down to 0 here. So that's the idea, basically, that you take single panel and take a single sun position and calculate this value. And then take that single panel and calculate the value for all sun positions and just calculate the average. Once you have the average for a single panel, you do that for all panels and then you have the average for the entire roof. So, if we click on Calculate Efficiency here, we will see the average for the entire roof. We will see the minimum, the panel with minimum efficiency, which is the panel that has the smallest average for all sun positions and the panel that has the largest average for all sun positions. As you can see here and as I told you in the video ProArchitect 002, these ranges are very, very small. So we will have to think about it in the future, how to improve this or how to make use of this. But you can already visually see, it is clear that the, these panels here have the largest efficiency from the entire roof. And the blue ones, of course, have the lower efficiency. You can experiment with different surfaces and see different dispositions of uh, efficiency. And you will also be able to compare the average efficiency of the entire roof. Of course, we will examine this in the next step when we do an optimization, when the computer will be able to examine thousands and millions of surfaces just to find the most efficient one. But for now, let's stick with this and let's test this and think how we can improve it. I gave you an option here to include self-shadowing, which means that if a, if a sun ray comes from here and hits somewhere here, it will not reach these panels that are behind. It is pretty slow, I will have to improve the algorithm somehow, but you can test it and tell me if it's really r slow or not. Now let's just check the flat roof for a, for a second. You can select the flat roof. As I told you, the sun positions can all remain here. It doesn't matter, you can put them anywhere in the file. So we'll not move them for now, we will leave them to be the same. For the flat roof, if you want to generate your panels properly, it is important to choose the orientation in the right way. You will have to check that it is a uniform flat roof. The warning here will say that you need to manually select lines in U and V direction on your surface. And the advantage of this is that the algorithm that it will be used to generate the panels and to calculate the efficiency will be much faster than for double curved surfaces. So what you will want to do is you here press on choose orientation and then choose your U or horizontal orientation from the beginning till the end and then your V Orientation, you want to choose top down, so top down, but your lines will have to intersect so that the algorithm finds this inter intersection and defines the proper orientation of panels. If this is not the proper orientation, you can always flip orientation. So if you chose your orientation properly, you can basically just generate panels and calculate the efficiency in the same way. So please test this plugin. The point was, as I told you, to show you how to get from a simple idea to a working tool. And now we can all test it and think about how to improve it. And in the next step, I will show you how we can automate the optimization of surfaces like this, so that we can test thousands and millions of different surfaces until we find the most efficient one. So again, please test the plugin, give me your feedback and your ideas on how this can be used and how we can improve this. Stay free and let's get to work.